Wasp Machine and NL says, am I the only one who's indifferent to NVIDIA killing off his ex? I was at first, but once I saw Mira's Edge not working on a 5090, I was not. And so why aren't you indifferent, Matt? Why is this a big deal? Yeah, so for me, this kind of scared me a little bit because you don't really know how the extent of how bad it could get because we're only listing a couple of AAA games like indie games could be affected as well. But the main thing from a dev standpoint for me is these games might be 10 years old. Basically what's happened is it's not just PhysX 32-bit that's kind of been killed off, but it's also CUDA 32-bit. So we're talking about physics right now, but like technically the CPU version of physics will work and technically the 64-bit version will work. But the concern is a lot of these old games have 32-bit in their engine and it's not a simple upgrade. You know, um, NVIDIA didn't really announce this with much, like it's kind of quietly announced that this is not supported. It would have been nice to hear a post from NVIDIA saying, hey, in five years from now, this is going to get ended because developers, I mean, the publisher for your game might not be around anymore. I do know some publishers have contracts where they're not allowed to update their own game. Like people might think it's not a big deal because of our AMD cards just kind of fall back, but for game preservation and for- Right, AMD can still play these games. Why does it matter? For millions of people that have bought these games, the games might not be earning enough money to worth be updating or fixing, right? Um, it might require engine rewrites and stuff like that. And so I'm kind of concerned that this was not a lot of work to NVIDIA to maintain. And I'm just concerned about dropping this. Even though, like I said, 32 bits old, maybe they should drop stuff. I don't think this is a good idea. And I don't think this is a good idea without notice. You can say it doesn't matter. Fine, you just won't be able to use these special effects. But I think it's actually a huge deal for a few reasons. Number one, it further illustrates there's no point in buying Blackwell. The 5080 isn't that much stronger than a 4080. If you can get a 4080 for 10, 20% less than a 5080, I would because it, maybe you don't play Borderlands 2 anymore, but if you do, wh why, why have this? Blackwell is barely stronger, number one. And then just number two, it's just a worry about like what else could break over time. And it's just so bizarre to me because this doesn't, seem like an issue for nvidia to keep supporting right and it, it just calls into question for me again how careless they've been with this generation i think nvidia maybe picked this time to drop it so that the next gen maybe they can make some hardware changes to not need these instructions or something like that potentially but fundamentally there's no reason why this gpu can't run we're talking about people buying a worse more expensive gpu that has now been kneecapped to not run physx not a good idea, but in, in terms of the performance, BizX has had a lot of performance problems over the years, right? So there was a company called Real World Technologies in 2010 that kind of had a lot of critical feedback of BizX about how it's missing CPU multi-threading optimizations so in order to kind of look, GPUs look better, right? There was an answer given by NVIDIA about how consoles didn't really need this, but it does make these older games, especially games using BizX, two or earlier that don't have these multi-threaded optimizations if we get bad one percent lows for example is stuttering and stuff like that it just seems like a bad time to drop it and nvidia could have done something like a dll that you know they could swap out that would do um 32 bit to 64 bit cuter or like some kind of pullback but yeah i just i don't think it's bad precedent to set it considering there's um nvidia game works and hair works and all these features and they're saying hey devs please add this nvidia specific feature are we going to look at some of the early ray tracing features for example in the future that don't take off maybe 10 years from now that don't take off and are they going to be abandoned in games and we're going to be using a different api or a different different accelerated thing it's not just about physics we're really talking about the issues of any time a company gives a black box to devs is like, why might not it get an update from a developer? So NVIDIA didn't warn anyone. And so you're forced to kind of scramble to patch this. And like you said, let's, let's highlight this. A publisher might literally have some old contract that says you can't patch it unless this one entity approves. That entity might not even be around anymore or, or like, like a business could be gone. And so they can't even approve a patch. And again, I'm, I'm not saying all of this just for PhysX. This is why all these games works features, like anything that isn't a very plug and play simple thing, are a huge issue. Yeah, and just to expand on that, um, some developers have used the PhysX source code and edited it, right? So NVIDIA has been working on this thing for some time now, and there's bugs in PhysX that crash. There's all sorts of problems that might happen for your game. You can't just update your game's PhysX 
from like version 2 and just swap it out to version 4 or something, you're pretty tight in there. Even for Unreal Engine 3 games, I know there's a lot of problems and, and bugs, epics fixed on the, the engine source code. Not to mention, like, if you're, is, is your developer using a Windows 10 PC or Windows 11 and the latest Visual Studio version, your game might not build. It might have like bugs in it from rebuild. Like, we have a game for our game, Path of Titans. We can take a, a, a version from five years ago and try build it now. And we have bugs that didn't exist back then because the compiler has changed, right? It would be nice for NVIDIA to release some kind of translation tool or something. But let's face it, these features, you're just going to have to stick in an old GPU. And I, we can see, we can check back in a year from now and just see how many games actually patch, but I don't think it's going to be many. I also have to bring this up. I mean, I think you are also someone in the Moore's Law said Discord that pointed this out, the Hell Divers 2 dev that took the bait on Twitter and was like, yeah, there's a reason we don't use FSR or DLSS. It's working as well as we want it to. And we think it's hit a level of performance that people seem to say is fun. So why do we need to add this? And I remember you bringing up that there's also a worry if you add FSR or especially something proprietary like DLSS in five or 10 years. And Hell Divers 2 is an online game that could keep making revenue for a very long time. It might just break, right? And now this dev that people, some people were attacking doesn't look so dumb anymore. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I actually, I have some more to add to that one because I actually agree with them now. But for the last maybe six months, I've had a rendering expert working on DLSS FSR for my game at the moment. And the NVIDIA DLSS plugin, at least the time when I checked, for Unreal 5.5 was four or five months out of date and not really supported, right? And there's a lot of developers on there saying, hey, when's the support? When's the update? And so when we, we had a developer rewrite the DLSS plugin to work with the new version, it takes months, by the way, right? And things like frame gen don't work, right? Things work, things break, right? For example, with FSR 3, we're trying to add in. I sent an email to AMD saying, hey, can I get support? You know, maybe we can partner up. Can I get help with this FSR? And they're like, if we like your game, we'll reach out. Goodbye. <laughs> so if you're an indie dev, you're kind of e-begging NVIDIA and AMD to get support. And for FSR 3, for example, it can work, but it breaks PS5. Or it can work, but it breaks Vulkan Shader Model 6 for some reason. Or DirectX 12 added bindless rendering, and now that's broken. So we've just got a, you know, some guy finished all the settings UI for it. So that's all ready. And we got all the plugins ready to go. And the only upscaling we have working right now is Intel's one, which is broken because their driver has flickering in it. Okay. And so, so I spent maybe like tens of thousands of dollars paying someone to add these upscaling tech in. And because I'm, I don't know if this is just on, on these podcasts or whatever, talking smack about these companies, but getting support from this thing is difficult unless you're a AAA company. And so, yeah, with the not adding FSR, obviously Hell Dive is a big game and maybe they would have got support but I can see why they wouldn't do support and I can see why it's fragile. And if you want to update on Real Engine, now your FSL plugin's outdated and doesn't compile. And like with the PhysX 32-bit, if they update to PhysX 64-bit, they might have to find like a version of FMOD and Oodle and there is all libraries might be 32-bit and they've got a hull to pay trying to get that stuff updated. Um, so there's a justifiable reason why to not add these things. And I, I think I'd agree. And it's funny because like, you know, your game is already established you're adding stuff to it so you add mega geometry that stopped working it'd be kind of like mirror's edge with extra physics well whatever turn it off the game still works but if you're a new indie dev and you're like trying to get funding and assistance from nvidia to feature mega geometry and do all this stuff you now have to worry well if my game hinges on this one nvidia feature is it not going to work in five years yeah, and you being in the NVIDIA driver installer might be millions and millions and millions of views, right? Like, it's equivalent to spending maybe a million dollars in marketing that you get for adding this thing in. So uh, that can make And all the tech tubers them. that will benchmark your game one weekend. Yeah, like, if, like a lot of people wanted to port their game to, say, PS5 Pro because you'd be on the Sony PlayStation Store under PS5 Pro games and you would get so much better marketing than just being on PS5 normal, right? And... That's a lot of the incentive is like players being happy is good, but most of the incentive is we want to be in the PS5 Pro games list and we want to be the first game to use this new feature, right? It sounds like kind of the conclusion we're coming to here is like, well, we've explained or you've explained for the most part why this is a big deal, like why this illustrates the problems with these like 
black box features, especially ones that are used as marketing weapons against the competition and intended to be closed off. To me, it seems like NVIDIA just doesn't care about gaming anymore. It definitely seems like it. I'd expect 32 bit CUDA to stay around just for the non physics applications as well, right? Having a dominant market share definitely puts, puts someone into not really caring about all the small details, and that can definitely shift the market. Yeah. Well, again, you know, it's about focus. It's about with Zen 2, they knew it had to succeed with Zen. So there were people that didn't even just matter how many engineers were working on the final code for Zen when it launched. It was like they knew it had to succeed. I don't think anyone thinks this needs to succeed at NVIDIA. So they're like, yeah, sure. It passed the test that we had to do. Send it through. And there maybe wasn't as much of a, hmm, did you notice that one weird thing? Could that be something we're missing? That's my guess, though. That's my guess. All Jesse wants is for Maurice to play with her more often, but unfortunately he just does not give out playtime or kisses for as low of a rate as she does. And I think she's just going to have to deal with that. But do you know what you don't have to deal with? Paying too much for Microsoft software if you go to cdkeyoffer.com. This piece of content is sponsored by cdkeyoffer.com. Whether it's Microsoft operating systems, office products, or even many of the latest games, cdkeyoffer.com provides PC gamers with a product this community deserves. Amongst endlessly elevating component costs, Fair pricing on Microsoft keys is one thing that we at least should get, I think. And, you know, the Moore's Law is Dead team has been working with CDKeyOffer.com for a very long time. And that's because they're good to me, good to Dan, good to about a dozen family members of friends of mine that have used their services. And they've been really, really good, most importantly, to the Moore's Law is Dead team community. So support this channel by using offer code BROKENSILICON to save 25% off Microsoft software, or you can also use Die Shrink to save 3% off everything else on the website like games. Using either of those codes really helps the channel a ton, and it helps save you money. So use those codes BROKENSILICON and Die Shrink at cdkeyoffer.com today. <laughs> 